first question for you about that. Uh, uh, AEC Press in 1972 became the publisher and the English translator of uh, Mahfouz's work, uh, Mahfouz, most of Mahfouz's novels and work. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to know what the efforts that the AEC Press has uh, exerted to, um, to acquaint the Western reader of Mahfouz and his novels and his culture. What are the efforts and how right. the books were translated right. with Western readers? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, it's, it's, it's true. 1972 was the first uh, agreement we made with Nagib Mahfouz yeah. to translate some of his works. And it might be of interest to you that um, he took this first book, the relatively short Miramar, six years to translate by three translators. Yeah. It's hard to believe. Uh, since then, of course, uh, uh, translations from the Arab world have increased dramatically mainly because of our pioneering work. We decided not only, we decided early on, 25 years ago, more than 25 years ago, to do all, essentially all of Nagib Mahfouz's major works and eventually all his works. But we also decided um, thereafter to become or remain the leading uh, publisher of Arabic literature in translation. Having translated some 150 books in the last 25 years, from uh, writers uh, as far as Morocco and the Gulf and as Lebanon and Sudan um, and uh, more than a hundred authors, more than 150 books um, an extraordinary, extraordinary accomplishment to uh, make Arabic thought, Arabic culture, Arabic life um, known to readers uh, in the West and the rest uh, of the world. Um, Nagib Mahfouz, of course, was a unique case. Uh, there was no talk about, there was always talk about a Nobel Prize, uh, but it seemed to be far off when we made a final agreement with him in 85, three years before he won the Nobel Prize, to do all his works. And uh, when, uh, in 1988, uh, of course, he, there were some uh, seven or eight novels, major novels, translated already, and. Uh, we also took on the dissemination of his uh, works in other languages, which we licensed to uh, 40 publishers, or rather into 40 languages. Um, and there are some 600 foreign language editions now. So the impact uh, in terms of volume of Mafus outside the Arab world for which we are largely responsible, co-responsible, yes, yes has been enormous um, because uh, a Nobel Prize um, you know, either makes a very famous author more famous or makes an un unknown author yeah. not necessarily more unknown but not particularly well known. But in the case of Nagib Mahfouz, there may be one or two others, uh, he was practically unknown outside the Arab world and now it's of course a worldwide phenomenon. With the acceptance um, uh, since 1988 of uh, Arabic literature in the rest of the world is uh, uh, very considerable and um, the sort of cultural impact that that has made in understanding something about uh, the Arab world, the Middle East, other than in political terms uh, is, um, is unique and the sort of AC Press has uh, made a major contribution in this area of um, cultural dialogue, of uh, um, cultural exchange, and so on. So we're, we're happy. Uh, I understand, of course, you published uh, Children of Ali before it was published in Egypt. I'm sure of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, did you face any problems, did you face any obstacles when you published the Children yes. uh, of Ali, in right. Islam in particular, because there was a lot of debates about it? Well, uh, the answer is no. Uh, but uh, I should um, perhaps um, uh, answer this a little more comprehensively. Um, the Children of the Alley were published uh, around uh, 19, in 1960 in uh, um, excerpts in magazines in here, uh, in newspapers, and they were not allowed to publish a book in book format in Egypt. It was then published uh, in Lebanon and other countries and it was generally available. An English language edition was uh, first uh, uh, translated in the 1970s um, and circulated quietly every place else. We imported some of these uh, 
without problems, uh, but there was no dramatic uh, test of whether or not the book could be published. We asked Nagib Mahfouz from time to time, shouldn't we publish um, an uh, edition, an English language edition here? And he generally waved off, um, saying he didn't want uh, any more controversy about that. Um, until um, we came to his 90th birthday, I remember it uh, well, when we said we want to do a complete uh, edition of all his novels that were available now in one sort of box format. And we only had 24. Couldn't we include just <laughs> enough the, of the alley? Um, as it um, has since been called. I know Children of Gebelawi was the first translation, but Children of the Alley was a new translation that was made um, by an American publisher uh, in the 1980s or early 90s. Uh, and um, so we then published uh, this book in 1996, I think. Um, as um, part of our 25 volume set, and nobody noticed. <laughs> uh, very few people paid attention. Eventually, uh, Akram Weekly had uh, one uh, fairly extended uh, um, review of the book, um, its controversy. Uh, Richard Jacquemont, um, you may research that. Richard Jacquemont, uh, who was a translator from French, uh, out of from Arabic into French. Uh, has written books on Arabic literature, um, and uh, he wrote this. Art I remember, wrote this article about um, the controversy of children of the alley. There is no controversy anymore. Uh, at least uh, it hasn't uh, uh, come up for a long time. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, Maggie Mafus was attacked for it. Yes, Thirty years good. after after it was published, uh, can you imagine? Um, but. Um, the answer is no. Uh, we've had no uh, controversy. I'm surprised now that we are planning to uh, do all kinds of things with incorporation with uh, family and uh, friends and uh, Egyptian cultural establishment, talking about the centenary this year. And in one of those preparatory discussions, uh, I found out, maybe I was the only one surprised in the room, that uh, Nagib Mahfouz was not generally accepted in the curriculum uh, of uh, Egyptian uh, uh, literature studies. Uh, in the university, no. I, yes. I studied English literature, right. and uh, uh, we used to take Arabic literature uh, course, mm. but we took only a few today on hand. Can you hand. imagine? Yeah. Uh, this is still true today, so one would yes. hope that this will be changed uh, in the new Egypt, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, of course, uh, a great opportunity to do yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. And uh, I would like to know how, I know that you are one of the members of the committee, and uh, mm -hmm. how did the idea came for you, and who was the main, you know, uh, who, who was the main one who was the person who was behind the idea and so forth? Well, it was my idea. Uh, I had just uh, uh, arrived here again um, after having been uh, at the Asian Press in the mid 80s for a couple of years, and um, we were looking at what we might be doing in the future. and. Um, that's essentially when we made a conscious decision to expand the program of Arabic literature and translation beyond Nagib Mahfouz. And so one of the reasons uh, for um, establishing the, the award um, in 96, uh, and with his encouragement, by the way, was to uh, uh, encourage a lot of writers to submit their works and have them reviewed and recognized and considered for translation. So the major part of the award is um, not only the recognition, um, but uh, is um, the commitment to have this book translated uh, and made available. So since uh, the mid-90s, um, this has been a consistent, now 15-year uh, program, um, which uh, brought about a lot of other uh, promotions uh, for Arabic literature. There is the Arab Booker Prize, there is a uh, the Sheikh uh, Zayed Prize in, uh, in Abu Dhabi. Um, so a lot of people have uh, promoted literature uh, worldwide um, and uh, uh, Egypt uh, and Arab writers uh, have um, um, 
Well, Egypt and the Arab writers so of other Arabic countries have been guest nations in international book fairs. And that always had to do, of course, with uh, um, basically promoting authors' works and none more obviously and more comprehensively than Nagib Mahfouz. Yes, um, and there's a fire. Well, never mind. <laughs> um, I think our particular contribution will have to be highlighting and uh, further supporting, promoting his international standing. That's been AUC's role. Uh, a lot of other people do things, the Ministry of Culture, his friends, uh, uh, Egypt uh, generally uh, will celebrate Nagib Mahfouz. So our unique contribution as AC Press will uh, be to make sure that not only the foreign component uh, is included here in the celebrations and you have an exhibit now where we can show you uh, 600 foreign language editions uh, from you know Russian to Croatian to Chinese, you name it. Uh, we have all the major works translated in all those languages. But also uh, to uh, encourage uh, and engage our foreign publishing partners, say the French publisher who has worked with us on French translations, the uh, Brazilian publisher, etc., in doing something for Nagib Mahfouz in those countries. As I said, his books are available in translation, not only in 40 languages, but in 100 countries. And um, it doesn't happen very often that a Nobel Prize uh, winner has a centenary and has so many books translated into so many languages. So that's the, our major thrust. Of course, we will have a complete uh, edition uh, of all his works um, in a sort of centennial uh, library, uh, which is being published. And there will be events where people might be reading from Mahfouz, where movies are shown. Um, and, you know, he has been uh, part of uh, um, the literate culture of Egypt and uh, the Arab world now for such a long time. So, it's wonderful. Uh, I want to ask you as a reader for his books, as a reader for his books and for his novels, and you are, as a Western reader, okay, not an Egyptian or Arab reader, mm -hmm. what's the most uh, significant um, Feature that attracts you in his reading, in his novels, as a Western mm. reader, must be something unique that makes you interested. That does because he loves deeply into the character, because he used right. to question the existence of human beings and things. Of course. Like that. Well, first I should acknowledge that um, as a, as a new reader of Arabic literature in translation, um, I was and most people are. Uh, first of all. Uh, challenged to sort of move along with this different culture. And, um, and this is true of Nagib Mahfouz's work. I, I know a lot of people, and myself as well, a lot of people start reading Midak Ali, and it is not an easy book to, to follow the emotions, although the story is relatively clear and simple. Um, I first read Miramar, and um, I found that a very accessible book for a Western reader. It's, it's more the format of a novella, really, and uh, the three symbolic figures uh, are clearly understood to be symbolic, etc., etc. Um, in the end, uh, I think w one is very grateful uh, to uh, uh, be put into the uh, culture, uh, mainly an urban culture for him, and uh, the, the life of, of the poor. Uh, in, in the cities of Cairo, in the city of Cairo. Um, it's a deeply human uh, uh, experience all along. You know, you realize who these people are and you also realize that, that although Mafus's stories are relatively simple stories, how deeply psychologically sophisticated they are. I mean, I think uh, uh, people's uh, uh, personal challenges, triumphs, desperations, and so on, are so beautifully uh, described. Um, so he uh, deserves all the great critical acclaim that he has had, and I've yet to meet 
readers who uh, were not, um, you know, excited about the, the breadth of the stories and the depth of the, the emotions uh, that you can follow. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a storyteller, and of course, Arab writers are storytellers. Um, and uh, um, you look at the list uh, of these uh, hundred or so authors that we have published. Um, you know, some have relatively um, modest uh, uh, success in the international world. Others are huge success. You know, we published Alaswani with yes. uh, immense uh, uh, success uh, again. In very short time, uh, more than 30 different uh, foreign editions um, and uh, a huge uh, number of um, uh, editions sold. Um, he's always said that he likes to be straightforward and uh, tell his stories that everybody can understand them. And of course, um, often um, our writers tend to be very complex, very complicated in. Uh, why things happen and uh, um, and what you think is simple but beneath uh, lie the meaning yeah yeah yeah, yeah. exactly so, so i i don't know um, I'll, I'll compare this um, you know a lot of good books have been written by literary critics about uh, mafus and other writers and mafus's role in the arab world uh, and uh, some people call him the inventor of the modern arab novel um, not much to be said. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, he is um, uh, the great classic writer of the 20th century uh, in the Arab world. And if you want to understand something about Arab literature, you have to immerse yourself in Nagib Mahfouz to, to understand the sense of story and understand the depth of emotions that go through his, his works. Thanks a lot.